Oh, yeah. Cage goes in, cage goes out. Cage goes in, cage goes out. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm Alexis of F Sport Tap. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing anymore. I, I'm trying to cut down on that. But ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2022 Lexus Lex Us UX 250H Hybrid. This is the only, I believe, the F Sport. Trim level is the only trim level it's available in for 2022, which is just fine because, uh, as you'll see, it's got some really, really nice stuff on it. But it's kind of a little SUV, a little tiny one, smaller than, say, a uh, RX series, but larger than a, uh, well, it's larger than a motorcycle. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. But it's a fascinating little car because it, uh, it gets excellent mileage, but it has very, very good performance, which is all part of the uh, Lexus idea. Sort of like BMW, they want to deliver luxury and performance. But in the case of Lexus and their hybrids, they also want to give you great efficiency. And it has a little hatchback on the back. It's a four-door otherwise. Definitely compact on the interior, but still very comfortable, especially with the uh, F-Sport package because it has really nice cradly sport seats that we'll get into in detail. But one of the most interesting things to me about it is the drivetrain. Uh, this being part of the Toyota family, it's using some of the what I like to call the dynamic force technologies and that's what Toyota calls it that too from time to time. Uh, with an uh, incredibly efficient gas engine along with an electric power plant well, it's not a power plant, actually. It's a couple of electric motors with a third electric motor that actually drives a rear wheel. I'll get into that in just a minute. But something else that's interesting is while everybody's just gone crazy mad for lithium-ion batteries with their hybrids and their electrics, this one has one of the good old nickel metal hydride battery packs, which goes back to the original Prius, goes back to the 2019 uh, RAV4 hybrid and the Tundra and the C uh, Sienna, which is now a full hybrid all the time. And it also has that. Now, why are those batteries good? Well, there's the whole tried and true thing. They've been around longer than any other type of battery in hybrids. They also do better in extreme cold weather, in my opinion. They also do better when it comes to end of life stuff, as I understand it. They're much, much better when it comes to recycling. And all these things you get in this car. But first, let's look at this engine because it's not only a really efficient and interesting type of way to go down the road, it's really good looking too. Ah, uh, did I not promise beauty for you? Excellence in appearance. This is our little uh, Toyota gas engine right here, which is a two liter, ah, a dynamic force type engine, meaning it's one of the latest uh, small engines that Toyota manufactures, in this case, Lexus. And it has very high thermal efficiency, which means very high overall efficiency. Generates good power for its size, and it's also very clean in terms of emissions and very efficient in terms of fuel use. Now over here, electric electric stuff is in here i think here's where we get really complicated and this is where i'm having a problem with uh, the toyota motor company these days is they don't explain things the way they used to it's really changed as i understand it we're talking about a essentially a three motor system in the hybrid side of things and uh the first let's see where i do with my i got my, my crib notes here 
Uh, motor number one is primarily functions as a generator and a starter for the engine, which means that you don't have a, a traditional starter motor. You have a, a huge, like a ring electric uh, motor that turns and starts the engine effortlessly because as you probably know, with hybrids and so many other cars now, you come to a stop and the engine, if conditions are right, will shut down completely to save fuel. Uh, then we have uh, motor drive number two, which actually drives the wheels and also functions to uh, regenerate power when you're in uh, regeneration mode, which means you let off the gas, the generator becomes, uh, excuse me, the electric motor that propels the car becomes a generator and drags the car. So to, in order to turn the generator, you got to have some drag, right? And that helps to brake and slow the car as well as generate power for the battery pack. That's what uh, motor number, uh, which one is that? Uh, that's motor number two. Then there's a motor in back, which is called uh, officially, do I have that on here? No, well, a motor rear. <laughs> now here's where I got confused. Uh, if you take a car like the RAV4 Hybrid, for example, it has a motor in the back just to drive the rear wheels when traction demands you need rear wheel or all wheel drive. It also serves to regenerate power to the battery by whenever, like I said before, whenever you're coasting, it switches from a electric motor to an electric generator and generates power. On this car, I'm a little confused because it implies that all that motor does in the back is generate power to motivate the car, uh, excuse me, <laughs> generates power to push the car along, i.e. it functions just as an electric motor. It does not participate in regeneration activities. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, and I can't get a solid answer out of Toyota yet. I'm working on it. But uh, the fact of the matter is, it gives you all-wheel drive capability that way, and there is a graphic inside the car that explains what the heck everything is doing as you motor along. And when you're in regenerative mode and coasting, the rear uh, display does not show anything about that taking place from the rear motor. So, in closing with this, it appears that the rear motor is just a rear motor and not a rear motor generator. Then you have your two front motors that have different tasks. Are they parallel? Are they coaxial? Uh, are they both? Well, with Toyotas, that term has been kind of confusing because they tend to do both. So, it's a great little, it's a great little power play. It, it, the car moves out very, very nicely, has good acceleration. The total system output is 181 horsepower. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about the battery pack in a minute. But it works, and it works in a very refined Lexus type manner. And uh, the car is very fun to drive. But what of the transmission? Well, then that gets even more complicated because it's, it's like a continuously variable type of transmission but it's primarily run by uh, one of the electric motors, I believe, like a Prius does things. And so it's not like a conventional planetary uh, transmission, although I believe it has a couple of planetary gears in it. You see how complicated this all is? You, you don't need to worry about, when I talk about complicated, I'm just trying to give you information about how stuff works. It doesn't have anything to do with whether or not this is a much more complex car, meaning harder to service, less reliable because of all the parts that can break down. It's nothing like that. It's just how they go about getting the maximum amount of performance and efficiency out of a hybrid system. And Toyota's been doing this longer than anybody on a large scale. So uh, there you go. Now a little bit more about that rear battery. Can you see that? Can you see that? It's a very important vent. That vent allows the uh, liquid metal, liquid metal Lithium, wow, what kind of weight? What battery? It's a nickel metal hydride battery that is mounted underneath the rear seats and that allows it to breathe and get ventilated. Very important you don't cover that up, by the way, with like, a, oh, I don't know, big sheets or your mink stole or your, your precious antiques that you just found or your uh, uh, Irish wolfhound. Don't, don't put anything in front of that vent that stops it from working. But it's right here where the rather capacious rear seat is if you're a small person 
but it is a compact car so it doesn't have a whole lot of room if you're like a six foot four dude matter of fact you'll be very uncomfortable back here but if you're of reasonable size you'll be reasonably comfortable that makes sense to me and perhaps we should the back your hatch with hatch back let's have a look here oh wait it's not power assisted isn't that crazy for a Lexus? Yeah, whatever. Doesn't make anything bad or anything. Uh, as you can see, the lift over height is fairly high. Cargo area, yeah, fairly small. But you have the option of folding down the, the seats. And if we look here, a little more storage. Is there, in fact, a, oh, and a little more camera shadow? I don't think this vehicle has a spare tire. I'll double check. But you know how I feel about vehicles without spare tires. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! But it wouldn't be surprising at all because this is a very small car, and spare tires, even temporary spare tires, weigh a great deal. So a lot of them prefer to just give you a flat repair kit and a generous uh, roadside assistant plan. So if you have a flat, they'll just come fix it. Or, or if, they, if they can't fix a flat, I don't know what they do. So. Anyway, little but well furnished and not surprising for the size of a compact car. Here we have a rear suspension on the left hand side. It's fully independent, kind of a double A arm sort of arrangement. And uh, your ground clearance on this car is not outstanding, but good enough that uh, you're not going to just go around dragging your belly everywhere, which is most, most embarrassing if you're like a Lexus owner because you shouldn't be dragging anything anywhere because you've had the good sense to buy an excellent premium luxury vehicle. And incidentally this car has a, a nickel metal hydride battery pack which is the older design, the traditional, the kind that uh, Prius first had as opposed to like a lithium ion or lithium polymer battery which I much prefer, believe it or not. And the reason I prefer is I, I believe, and this is my personal opinion, that uh, the nickel metals do a lot better in really cold weather. And they have really, really proven their durability over time. Uh, when, the, when the Prius first came out, I was speaking to a Toyota official about the battery life. And I said, how long did, you know, realistically, off the record, yeah, this, this is you and me talking here. Uh, how long can you realistically expect the batteries to last? And this was the nickel metal hydride first generation. And he says, well, the engineers have discovered something really interesting about those batteries because we've tested them and tested them and tested them. And they've been on the road starting in Japan much longer than they've been on the road here in the United States. And we are discovering that in many, many cases, it's basically a life of the vehicle component. The uh, battery really lasts and another nice thing about the nickel metal hydrides are much easier to recycle and reuse components thereof compared to lithium ion but that's but lithium ions put out more power and are thus you can have a smaller lighter battery pack with lithiums than you could with uh, a nickel metal hydride for example in full electric cars uh, and now we have full electric full-size trucks like the uh, Ford Lightning and the battery pack in that truck, the standard one, is, I don't know, 2,000 pounds. It's really heavy. You get the extended range, it's even heavier. And if that was not a lithium ion battery, but instead a nickel metal hydride, it would absolutely weigh a whole lot more to get the same amount of power out of it. So that's one thing. But anyway. The, re the reason I bought all this up was, if you look at the diagram, and I'll, again, I'll, I'll give you a better shot later, uh, the rear wheels are usually indicated as powering the vehicle, not powering the vehicle, or recharging the battery, depending on the circumstance. But on this particular graphic, it doesn't show the rear wheels doing anything. Now, as far as I know, when this vehicle is coasting, those rear wheels and that rear motor is also contributing to recharging the battery. Uh, and the system, you got to understand the system on all these vehicles, the four-wheel drive system, it's not uh, 
meant for you to drive the vehicle up the side of Kilimanjaro in four-wheel drive all the time. What it's designed to do, and it's, uh, most of them are limited to about 45 miles an hour, is to get you going when you need to get going, like in snow, when, when traction cons uh, considerations are such that you really do need four-wheel drive to get moving. But once you get moving, the front wheels can usually keep you going in most circumstances. And that's what it's designed to do. It's, it's like a uh, helping measure. A, a, a very, it's like if you're carrying a very large dude in the back of your car and you get stuck and the large dude gets out and can push you out. That's, that's the really stupid analogy that I like to use. But it works. I, I can testify personally to having a uh, hybrid RAV4 in the wintertime and it does real well in the snow and ice. Very, very well. So anyway, this is an all-wheel drive vehicle that does have a separate drivetrain for the rear wheels when you need it. Now there's also times that it can kick in uh, when it's not necessarily all that uh, slippery. Uh, it just does it because from an energy standpoint, it makes more sense. And like, for example, if you take off from a standing start with a whole lot of uh, vigor, in other words, you're, you're like peeling out trying to zoom out, trying to race somebody, whatever. Uh, the rear wheels, even though it's dry pavement, will often kick in also to uh, facilitate the traction so that you'll get forward quicker and more efficiently. So, uh, so there's that, and that's pretty cool. All right, I was discussing this earlier, and I was giving Toyota a hard time. I, I give you a hard time because I love. Uh, but it turns out it is absolutely accurate when I said that the rear motor on this all-wheel drive hybrid system is merely for motivation and that kind of thing as far as getting you out of a slippery situation below speeds of uh, 45 miles an hour. And that means wet, dry, snowy, whatever. It's always there to do that. Uh, but as you can see, I'm going to show you here, when you coast... Man, this is just like driving on the moon, isn't it? <laughs> well, we're going to plow along here, and we're just doing it on our electric motor alone. There's no engine intervention involved, which is pretty amazing because this car hasn't been driven today. And we're still just going all electric. And usually they, uh, a lot of hybrids, they start out with the engine running just to get everything up to speed for emissions when you do use the engine. So, here we go. All right, as you can see, we proceed along, and when I coast, you're gonna see regeneration taking place from the front motor, but not from the back motor. We'll go around this corner here. It's a very exciting, dynamic corner. I could turn on the G meter, but I never understood what real practical use any of that's for, unless you want to tear up your tires in a parking lot. But some people live to do that, so. Okay, so anyway, here we go, we're coasting now. And as you can see, regeneration is taking place from that front motor and it's also being fed by the gas engine, which has come on, but the rear wheels, meaning that the rear motor is not providing braking or regeneration to the battery at all because that's not what it's for it is literally designed just to handle the uh, chore of getting you moving when you can't get moving otherwise it's it's like a lot of all-wheel drive systems especially on hybrids is it uh, it's only there to help motivate you in sticky situations. It's not there to take you up the side of Mount Tamalpais or anything like that. It's just there to help you get on. And on most of the ones, that rear motor also provides some regeneration, but not on this particular vehicle, it does not. And I'm sure Toyota has their reasons for it. Uh, they probably found out that, especially since the uh, nickel metal hydride batteries on this, the original kind, they, they recharge really fast compared to lithium ion batteries. So that's my understanding. That's one of the, the uh, nice things about them 
is they recharge very quickly. So there you go. I hope this is an instructive uh, for you. So there's another thing that I find really fun about the F Sport version of the UX 250H, and that is this little gauge cluster thing that I can play with like I'm Homer Simpson. See? Gauge goes over, gauge goes back. Gauge goes over, gauge goes back. Okay, let's have a look here, a little closer, at this Lexus UX 250H instrument cluster. Now, as I mentioned in our driving uh, sequence, I don't know if you've seen that yet or not. I haven't edited it yet, but it's a, it's a really interesting little thing that makes me very happy that, that does this. Oh, yeah. Gauge goes in, gauge goes out. Gauge goes in, gauge goes out. Now, in this position here, you can do many things. You can examine, well, let's, try, let's start with this. You have a compass, and the audio is off right now. And we're getting into the audio in just a minute, so uh, cool your jets. And then we have cruise control is currently off, and uh, lane tracing or lane uh, discipline or whatever the heck you call it is currently off. There are no messages because no one loves me. And here we have a number of controls in the settings section that you can activate and go through once the vehicle is stopped. Can't do it while it's moving, which is quite logical when you think about it. And then uh, there's back to this. So I mentioned audio. Oh, let's put it away, shall we? <laughs> I do enjoy that so very, very much. If we come over here, uh, we will see this rather incredible... I'll get this tissue out of here. Sorry. That's rather disgusting. Uh, this is very unusual, how the uh, audio system is accessed. You have this thing where you, you set your hand right on it, just like that. And to turn the audio on and off, you go down to volume right here. Press the button, and then you have Broadway. What? You don't like Broadway? Get out. Uh, and then we have uh, your tuning is here, and then media, you can select for whether or not you're listening to streaming off your phone or different radio bands or whatever you like. And then slightly forward of this, hands here, right? Here we have our trackpad, and our trackpad is used to navigate all over the place here. Uh, you can go to the menu, and right now, what, pray tell, is our drivetrain doing? Let's have a look, shall we? Uh, we're just sitting here. Oh, uh -uh, I, I could have told you that. But there we are. And you can, as mentioned before, there is a way, there is a way, using this thing here, to change the settings. Now we're at sport. Uh, and then eco. And then press it to go back to regular, normal, average. The main way we do things normally if we're normal people. But what have we here? What is that? It's an analog clock. <laughs> yes. I do like those quite a bit. So do we have any radio knobs? Well, no, not technically. But we do have this thing, and uh, it works fine once you get used to it. Is it better than a conventional system? I'll let you be the judge of that. When you buy your UX 250H, you can decide for yourself. I find it all right, but I could also just live with normal knobs and that kind of thing on the radio. But of course, as always, you also have the steering wheel itself. Once you have your settings set, you can uh, navigate from station to station and do everything else that you need to do. And this, of course, is how I was changing the screens up here. And the, the, the magic one, the one we like the most, of course, is uh, this one here that does this. I do like that. So there we have it. That's some of the details of your UH, uh, UX250H. And uh, I'm glad that you went with me into this journey into the cabin. Oops. <laughs> Thank you.
that's about enough of that. I'll tell you what, folks, it's too hot to go on. <laughs> and I think you got plenty already. So I will leave you with the immortal words of Mr. Peter Finch as Howard Beale in the film Network. And say to you now, don't eat like the tube. Drive safe, everybody. Next time. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube. You ate like the tube. You raise your children like the tube. You even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion. So turn off your television sets, turn them off now, turn them off right now, turn them off and leave them off, turn them off right in the middle of the sentence I'm speaking to you now, turn them off!